What's up guys, Jaden Irwin here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. As promised, you're gonna see a lot more of me this year on YouTube. And the main reason for that is because I just announced a new web framework called Sapling. If you don't know that, go back and watch the last video that I just posted. You'll probably be a lot less confused. <laughs> but yeah, I basically created a my take on what a minimal and modern web framework could look like. And what we're gonna do in this video is start on a project, what'll be probably a multi-part series. Um, if you've been following along, that's what I used to do a little bit more regularly on this YouTube channel. And we're really going to create a project, and in our case, a blog with Sapling from pretty much scratch. So if we go ahead and go to the main website, sapling.land, then you're gonna see there's this get started button. And you will notice right here on the main page, you can use NPM, you can use bun, or Dino, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of Dino examples, there's a lot of, there's Dino kind of all over the site, and that's just because that's my preferred runtime. But really it's simple NPM commands in place of the Dino commands on most things. Let's go ahead and get started though. So we're gonna go ahead and click that get started button. We're gonna do open the docs. And we're going to do this quick start with Dino just to get an initial project going. So what you do need to have is have Dino installed, or if you don't have Dino installed, go ahead and do the Node.js quick start. It's gonna be very similar, just slightly different commands there. But I'm gonna have this Dino one. Simplifies things a little bit, to be honest. If you have Dino installed, we're gonna to go to cursor here. We're going to paste that command. So this is pulling in the sapling create package that just lets you create a project from scratch we're going to use the basics template. There is a hello world template as well if you want something really minimal. I like the basics template because it just gives me the structure that you're most commonly gonna see on most projects. Okay, and then there you go. We're gonna use the default name. Let's CD into that. And then we're going to create a new window at that project. Let me make things bigger for you. And what you're gonna notice, just break down the structure here. So you've got a components folder, pretty usual for web frameworks, layouts, pages, static, or that you probably have seen that called public as well. You can actually rename that to whatever you want with Sapling, which is nice. You're not locked into specific namings of anything, really. Maybe stick to something, but yeah, you're not really locked into specific namings of things. And then we have our dino.json because it's a dino project. And you've got the dev command and the start command. We'll go more in depth on that in a second. You've got the Dino lock and then this index.ts file. So let me make that a little bit smaller. This index.ts file is the root of your sapling project. It's where your routes exist. You can obviously put routes somewhere else if you want to have a separate router file as your project gets larger. But in most cases, really this index.ts is totally fine. And this is gonna be pretty expected if you've used something like Hono or Express or Fastify or uh, Nest.js, like all those typical API focused or backend web routing frameworks. It's gonna look very similar. And we do have a pages folder, but that's where this is different than Astro or different than Eleven-D because we're not doing file-based routing. What we're doing is actually doing it inside of the, it's inside of the index.ts file. So. Once again, if you're used to Hono, you're used to Express, this isn't gonna be a weird paradigm, but if you're used to other meta frameworks that do file-based routing, it might take a little bit of getting used to. And the reason why this, I'll just do a little bit of backstory. The reason why we're not doing file-based routing is because of that buildless approach that Sapling takes. So really from the start, I wanted Sapling to be something that doesn't require you to run a build command in order to get the output HTML. It's treating the server as the build step, which almost makes it similar to just putting index.html files on your file hosting service, <laughs> and it just serves them. So it it's a little bit old school in that way, and hopefully if you try it out, you might see why that's actually really cool and just less headaches for most projects to not have a build step. And we can go more in depth in the future in later uh, videos where we explain other ways that you could actually have build steps for specific things like images or we also have pre-rendering in Sapling so you could pre-render a page to the HTML if you wanted to. So you're not locked in. 
to the build list approach, but that's the default for Sapling. So we've got our pages folder. And what we're going to do is actually just create a really simple about page. And let's take a look at the home page just so we have an idea of how this works. So this home page is imported at the index.ts. You're going to notice here site.get. So its default is a get command uh, or a get method. So you're going to get the main root level page. And then you have returning HTML. This is probably going to look really familiar if you've used Hono. And that's because I may or may not have stolen a lot of ideas from Hono. So much respect for that project and what they're doing. I just couldn't help myself on copying some of the ways that they do things. But yeah, we have this returning HTML and then we have this home page right here. And that's imported right there. So this home page, you've got exporting a function, pretty typical, exporting a JavaScript function for home. And then we have this layout. And this layout is under layout.ts, under the layouts folder. And you can see that this is the base for the website. This is the base for everything. So you have the sapling layout that's imported from sapling. And we've got our base head, which is like just the basic head tag, right? Pretty typical stuff that you see there. And then let's go back to layout. And we have enable islands. We're not going to talk about that right now. That'll come in the future. And then Uno config. So we're using Uno CSS with Sapling to generate Tailwind styles on the fly. Get more on that in the future as well. And then we have body class. So this actually is a the class that is on the HTML tag, the body tag in HTML. And then you've got the children, right? So which is just all the children of that HTML document. So pretty straightforward if you understand the way that HTML templating works. This should align pretty similarly to the HTML structure. And I'll show you more after we just get this going. So let's do Dino task dev. And we're just going to turn on our server, right? So if we go to the index.ts, you can go down here and you can see that we have a dino.serve command that is serving our server right now. So we have sapling servers running on. You could change this port to whatever you want. Let's say localhost 3000 and you've got hot reloading or like hot module. It's not necessarily hot module reloading like Vite has, but um, it's similar in a lot of ways. It's watching you make changes to the files and then you can refresh and see those changes. So let's go to localhost 3000 and then you're going to see your site is running right there. Pretty basic, right? It's centering the sapling logo with a link to our quick start that we're going through. So there's our Dino task dev command. And then you got the structure. And what we're going to do is actually copy this pages about.ts. And we're going to create that. Let's capitalize it and paste that. So pretty straightforward. You've got importing layout from the layouts, import HTML from sapling. And you could put that at the top if you wanted to. And then our HTML template tag is right there, right? You've got the max width screen large and that's centering it on the page and you've got a blue button or a blue link that like takes you back home so if we go ahead and load this back up go to slash about there you go i made my first mistake congrats i'm back to making tutorials and making mistakes on camera so much fun <laughs> let's just do site dot get and we need to actually you know import that about page component that we just created. So it's one extra step, but it's only one extra step that you're taking in the development phase. So pretty easy to remember to just go ahead and add that route slash about, and then you've got the about page. So let's go ahead and refresh about us. Welcome to our site and go back home. There you go. It takes you back home. And then let's go back to the home page and we could do go down here. Let's just add an about button, right? We could say go to about. Cool. So we've got a button that takes us to the about page. Welcome to our website. Go back home. We could go to the about page. Maybe we want this centered. Um, we could do item center, justify center. There you go. It's centered on the page. And that's really it. That's the cool thing about Sapling is that you have Tailwind without a build step, without a Tailwind config. In our case, we have an Uno config here. 
but technically you don't really need this uno config because this is the default for sapling so if we were to delete that it still would work your tailwind styles are just default tailwind styles that work so if you just want to use tailwind for like layout and then you want to use custom css in like an index.css file like a very traditional approach you could do that like you could just use tailwind for the structure of the page and then for like really cutting edge stuff you could use modern css inside of a css file and that's actually a hybrid approach that i've seen a lot of developers take because tailwind can get a little bit finicky when you're doing something really intense with nesting and nested styles and things like that so yeah that's really it that I, for this video it's getting a little bit long so far for the first piece of this and in the next one we're going to go through creating a blog page and writing markdown files and converting those to html so stay tuned there's going to be more parts to this series but we're just getting started hopefully you guys like it let me know what you think leave a comment below if you get stuck i'm happy to help out but yeah excited to start this journey peace